Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So in today's video, as the title says, we're gonna be working on the front porch, hopefully finishing it out in this video. But let me show you what I got going on and uh, what the game plan is. All right, so first things first, uh, I still have the lift. I just posted the gutter video, the last video, hopefully. And uh, I'm working on as much of the front porch as I can. Um, one quick thing though, the gutter guards, if you guys were wondering, they do not like to blow the leaves off. They kind of just sit on that flat like L channel now. And it's really windy today. Even when I go up there and try and brush them off, uh, the wind actually picks them back up and puts them back on the roof and then they slide back down again and they get caught in the gutter guard So they're not getting down in the gutter, but my uh, Fear is that the leaves will get wet and then when they get wet They'll sit there heavily and then as water comes on down It'll hit the leaf and then actually roll off of the gutter instead of actually finding its way down in But I don't know maybe we can get a big enough storm one day and blow those off and really, I think we only have to worry about them for a few months out of the year. But uh, if you were curious about the gutter guards, they are working, but they're working too well that they're actually holding the leaves up and that's not a great thing. Uh, next thing, last night I stayed out here again with a headlamp on. I got all of the OSB up on there and then I got an actual real uh, house wrap. It's not a cheap woven product. Uh, it says that it lets moisture out, but it actually is a solid um, piece of plastic basically so that way any water that gets behind the cedar shingles uh, Will not rot out the OSB and up in there should last forever and then how I'm doing this I did go ahead and put up the first bit of like kind of T11 uh, Up and under here on this side before I move the lift So we got all of our soffit under here done. I just need to transition over there and uh, I did have to add a two by four because the outside over here is a two by six. So by putting that inch and a half down, that gives my soffit more of a flat level or else those soffits would have been pinched up like that and then they would have angled it up and that probably would have looked weird. So two by four under there. And then what I did out here to try and make this look as best as I could, I put on a piece of a uh, five and a half inch LP going up there and that's where the cedar shakes are kind of dead ending into and the only reason why i did that is because that was the easiest way to make that transition line look absolutely beautiful instead of hanging all of the cedar shakes down low and then trying to cut them all up at a perfect angle that wouldn't have looked good but i also wanted to put that piece up in there it's hanging down an inch and a half so that when i take when i take my five eighths or three quarter inch uh, boards and we actually go up under here and build out a ceiling on the inside of this porch. They'll go up to that piece of five and a half dead end in there. And then there'll be about a three quarter inch drop still so that when water hits that, it will act as a drip edge. And then up on the bottom of my ceiling, I won't get water along that back edge there. So I thought that was the easiest way to trim that out. So I'm just gonna keep uh, plugging away today, getting all of these cedar shakes up on this gable end. And then we will have to purchase the uh, tongue and groove uh, boards that are gonna go up in here as the ceiling. I still think we're gonna burn them to give them a black look up in here. And then of course, back in here, we still have to do soffits and this beam and everywhere up in there has to be trimmed out with LP. So absolute ton of carpentry, fine detail work, a lot of caulking that we have to do too. But again, I'm just gonna set up, hammer this out, and see how much I can get done today before sun goes down and we've only got a few more days with the lift.
Hey everybody, welcome back for another day. So what I've been working on the rest of yesterday and that I'm gonna be working on today, as you can see, I have fully boxed out that beam up there. So basically we just took LP smart siding, we got our soffit on, cut our hole for our light. And then again, we completely boxed that beam out inside, outside. I'm not 100% sure what Aaron wants to do with these yet. Um, it, we were talking about like putting stone around them. The problem is the stone would be kind of like overhanging. There's not a lot of room here because we only have an inch or so out here. And uh, that would only go up, you know, about four feet anyway. So basically up there, I think they would just get stained the same color that the deck's gonna be, the stairs, the trim and everything else, which is gonna be basically this dark brown color because that's LP smart siding there. I went ahead and painted that brown, but then we're also getting a matching uh, Sherwin-Williams stain that will stain those boards, all of the posts and everything. Everything will get stained the exact same color because it's all real lumber. It's probably gonna look a little bit different of a color for the first uh, two years until we stain it again, like two years later. And that's because these top boards were already stained one color. And uh, the treated lumber is obviously darker than those, even though they are both treated. But these ones, for whatever reason, are the lightest. And then you got darker and then darker. So hopefully the stain takes to everything, but it is what it is. But now I am working on this side. Uh, we've got to completely box that in. I already got my first soffit up. I'm getting ready to cut my light. And then once all of that is completely boxed in, we just have to figure out another uh, date and time to finish this video up for the porch that we'll have to purchase the tongue and groove. And then I think without the lift, um, I can get my scaffolding out here and I should be able to just walk all the way up and all the way down with the scaffolding and put on our tongue and groove boards and then completely box that out and be done with that. But if you guys have missed our other videos, what I'm working on again right now is the soffits. And what I like to do is because these soffits have a decent amount of cracks in them, uh, a stink bug and everything can get through these cracks, no problem. So we've got our window screen cut down and we're just gonna roll this out and glue it on down. And that way absolutely nothing can get up into our attic space because that does have me uh, asking one more question. Once this fully gets boxed up in this porch, I will have absolutely zero access to be able to do anything up and underneath of the porch and anything up and behind the gen stone wall back there where the original roof is. I'm thinking I'm going to have to cut an access hatch in the existing roof back there so we can go up through the garage, get up into the attic, and then that hole in the roof will get me up into this attic roof if I ever have to do maintenance or I have, or I have to get up in there to look at something. It'll probably be a big pain in the butt with all the attic insulation put up in there. I'm gonna have to obviously not step on that, but walk my way over to that hole. So as high up as the hole could go, like up on the existing roof up there, that's probably where it's gonna have to go. But I think an access hatch uh, is going to be needed uh, since this is such a large roof up here. We need to look for leaks, bugs, if they were to get up in anywhere, which I don't think they will because I did such an awesome job caulking everything over in that side. But you don't wanna find a beehive 20 years later and the thing is like 500 pounds and uh, they've just made an absolute ginormous nest and you never knew about it because I have seen that happen uh, on some other videos. So access hatch, I think I'm gonna have to do it. But for right now, let's finish out this soffit. Let's cut our light hole, trim and box out that beam. And then I think I'll be done for today because it is Sunday. The lift goes back tomorrow. They were not able to pick it up yesterday, which is awesome. It gave me uh, two more days to work on stuff. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish out the gutters this season unless I fall into some money and can rent this lift again for another few days and finish out all the gutters is what it is but let's go ahead and finish as much of the porch up as we can
All right, guys, another day kind of coming up to a close here. Uh, sorry, I never hear the GoPro turn off when uh, I've got earplugs in. But went ahead and finished up this entire side over here. Already got two layers of paint on it, so it is now completely done and matched up with the house. Uh, I don't have the soffits done yet because those grills are impossible to paint with a paintbrush. We got to bust out the sprayer and actually hit the grills from each side or you still see the brown show through. Kind of like on this soffit under here that I haven't done yet, except I hit that with hand painting and it just looks nasty. So, but that is completely done on this side. Just move the lift. I'm going to put two coats of paint over on this side. And then I guess I'm just going to have to call it a wrap and get the lift for another week and put the gutters on. But by then it'll probably be the dead of winter and kind of pointless to put them on since we don't see a ton of rainfall in the winter. But uh, again, later in this video, we're definitely gonna get some money and we're definitely gonna bring the scaffolding out here and we're gonna finish this porch and we're gonna blow torch it. Uh, really black this time, unlike what we did down in the basement. We're gonna hold on it for a very long time until it's absolutely charred and burnt through. So that way no bug will want to eat that, uh, that charcoal because we are just going to be using probably like a yellow pine as opposed to spending more money and getting like cedar or something. But it should be fairly simple. The only thing that is a huge downside is I was going to try and put a seamless joints up here, but it looks like from the outside of the trim to the underhang where, I don't know if I mentioned this, but up there that piece of trim that the batten strips dead end into and where the truss is, I left about a three quarter inch or five eighths of an inch gap so the board can slide under there and it'll be kind of be seamless under there. But with the laser uh, tape measure going from there to there, it's 12 feet and five eighths of an inch. So that means that I'll have almost absolutely no board going up and under there because we are short. So that means instead of buying 12 foot pieces, and having them go the entire way, we're probably gonna have to do eight foot pieces, and then we're gonna have to do probably like an eight and a four, and then an eight and a four, and then eight and a four as we kind of zigzag on up there, which is a huge pain. But uh, I'm not buying 14 foot pieces and cutting off over two feet and then having them be completely worthless. So it is what it is, I guess. But uh, let me get it up over here. Let me paint all this up. And then I guess we'll wait on me to purchase the tongue and groove ceiling and install that next. Hey everybody, welcome back several months later to the porch build and finishing it off. We finally were able to get the lumber, obviously because we sold the tractor. So what we ended up going with was like a tongue and groove. They call it car siding, but it's basically shiplap. But uh, you can do it reversible on two sides. So like on this side, you got that groove down the middle and that splits these guys into basically like three inch and three inch, or you can flip it over and you got a nice like seven inches or so. They call these one by eights, but really they're only seven and one sixteenth of an inch wide. But thankfully these things are 12 foot and three quarter. I think I mentioned before, we weren't gonna be able to do one whole board on the porch because uh, I had made the porch to be 12 foot, but the porch is more like uh, almost 12 foot and one inch. So thankfully these things are three quarters of an inch too long. So they actually end up working perfect that uh, we've got a little bit of a trim that I'll show you outside of there. We're pushing it tight against the siding on the outside gable end, but because there's a piece of trim over on the house side, you can move it off of the house and that trim makes like a nice little 90 in there that you can't see that it's a, a little short. We might have to fill it in with some caulking. I mean, we, we've got to put some paint up in there to like fill it out, but I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. But the only thing that we have decided to do, we decided to stain it with an ebony stain. And uh, I think we used this all down inside of the vault too. And it's this Varathane, I think, premium wood stain. And it works super, super well. It says right on it, it'll coat three times faster. And let me tell you, it does. By the time you wipe it on and wipe it off, the stain is already in there. I've used other stains before where you have to stain it two or three times or just let it sit there for five or 10 minutes and soak and soak. 
I'm not joking. You wipe that on and wipe it off, the stain is instant. So that stuff works freaking amazing. I know we've talked about going with the Japanese route of actually uh, burning this lumber like we did down in the vault. The problem is, is if you burn it, you lose so much of the surface of the wood that especially the wood is not that thick. It's only like five eighths of an inch to begin with. And then when you have this groove right here, you're really weakening it by burning it down so far. And with that being outside, as opposed to down in the vault, you really, really, really want to burn it really thick and burn it way down into the fibers. And uh, if anything does go wrong with uh, animals or just deteriorates over time, then we would have to replace the entire thing by leaving this wood in its integrity uh, from the factory and staining it black, it basically, you can stain it, you know, 10 more times over its lifetime and you're never really losing the integrity. So hopefully bugs don't find it appetizing, but it is a very nice dark black stain. In fact, I've just put up four panels outside. I've got to finish up here today. So uh, we'll do a full install later and staining 64 more of these guys because it does take a while. But at least in this low light condition, it blends in almost perfectly that it's not painted like the LP, but uh, it does blend in very well. Hopefully I will be able to take the stain though and go back up in there and at least hit my nail holes. So you kind of hide the nails a little bit or I'll ask Erin to see what she thinks and maybe leave them exposed but I don't like that the nails go in just a hair and then the wood ends up actually getting exposed. So a uh, carpenter bee, for example, may find that appetizing that they won't be chewing through the nail, but they can see that light lumber. And since this is, I think, regular pine, they're gonna go right after that. So I might wanna actually, again, stain the nail holes. The only problems that I've noticed so far is there is a little bit of a gap behind here. This LVL may be a little bit wonky. So as I cut off the tongue off of the back side of here and set it up there, you got a little bit of gap under here which bugs can get in. Not to mention these boards are not like premium boards. So once we get enough of these up here, I'll come up and look down and if I see air gaps or anything, we can put some caulking down in here or we can put some like just a, like a glob of spray foam. And I think they even use like the rodent repellent spray foam and uh, hit on wherever like you got a knot, like if a knot has a hole all the way down through, put something on the backside. So again, bugs don't try to get up and uh, get up through here. But that was really the only problem back around here. And then I think you guys can see right there how that trim board should have been a little bit tighter up in there and I didn't paint it. Granted, you'll probably never see that LP regular color from down here, but uh, we might have to just throw some caulking or something down up in there on the back side of that upper piece of trim and block that out so it doesn't make like a little ridge that uh, bugs or anything wanna sit on or start going that way into the LP. But I cannot wait to get this done. So like I said, I gotta run tonight. We got some stuff to do, but it looks freaking awesome pushed all the way up against there. It's gonna go all the way up and down for a full 12 feet across, so there's no seams. It's actually gonna be a really strong and tight ceiling. We will eventually be cutting a hole on that house roof, but I just wanted to show you guys that real quick and see what you guys think of that process and how it's gonna look. Again, I know from down here, it almost looks like it's solid one color. Like there's no difference between the painted black and that stained black, but I promise you, it does look a little bit different in person. And uh, we'll get the painting hopefully in the springtime and obviously get the porch, everything up in there painted and done. This year, because it has been a while, we'll be able to stain the deck and the posts and everything because uh, it's now coming up on a year old. So they should be dried out. The off gassing should already have happened. Obviously it's been a long time since these have been up, but these were placed last uh, summer. So they're gonna be coming up on a year that they've off gassed too. But uh, yeah, I again, I cannot wait to see the final look of the front of this house. Um, and we will be doing another video shortly here. Uh, I do have the four by fours that we're gonna be doing a cable system that's actually gonna be our railings so we don't fall off. So we gotta get these four by fours obviously cut. They obviously need some time because they're new so can't stain those right away. So hopefully by springtime or summertime, we'll be 
able to stain and paint everything at once. And again, we'll do a video on installing those and doing a cable system. So I like the cables, Aaron wanted the cables. So when you're sitting on the front porch, your view's not obstructed by big old like fat railings or something. So that's what she decided to go with. So that's what we're gonna do. But again, I wanted to wrap this up here. You guys get the idea of what the ceiling is going to look like. I just have to obviously go up and complete the thing, but it's gonna be freaking awesome. Again, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and uh, wrapping it up here and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.